So I've one little bit of advice to give you. If ever you gets to upwards of 50 and feels disposed to go marrying anybody, just you shut yourself up in your own room and poison yourself offhand. You'll be glad on it afterwards. Goodbye, Sammy. Bye, old hen. Shortly after this poignant exchange with his revered parent, Mr Samuel Weller walked forth from the Great White Horse and after strolling about for some time, found himself in a kind of courtyard. As he was bestowing a wink on a healthy-looking servant girl as she threw up a blind, the green gate of a garden at the bottom of the yard opened and a man emerged therefrom. As an isolated fact, there was nothing very extraordinary in this because in many parts of the world men do come out of gardens, close green gates behind them and even walk briskly away without attracting any particular share of public observation. It is clear, therefore, that there must have been something in the man, or in his manner, or both, to attract Mr. Weller's particular notice. Strike me dumb if it ain't that air trotter. I could take my oath to that air black air and mulberry suit. Hello, you, sir. Yes, I said you, sir. Why, what do I see? Mr. Walker. Oh, you're very glad to see me, aren't you? Oh, glad. Oh, Mr. Walker, if you had but known, I've looked forward to this meeting. Oh, it's too much, Mr. Walker. I can't bear it. I, I, I can't. Get off. Get off, I told you. And stop crying over me, you portable engine. What have you got to say to me, eh, before I knock your head off? Aye, Mr. Walker. Don't call me Borker. My name's Vella, as you know well enough. Now then. Bless you, Mr. Walker. I mean Weller. A great many things. If you knew how I've looked for you. Very hard indeed, I suppose. Very hard, sir. But how is your good master? I hope he didn't catch cold that dreadful night, sir. He's well. How's yours? Is he here? Oh, yes. And I grieve to say, Mr. Weller, he's going on worse than ever. Where? At the house with a green gate? Oh, no, no, no. No, uh, no, not there. Then what was you doing there? Got inside the gate by accident, I suppose. Why, Mr. Weller, I don't mind telling you my little secret, because, you know, we took such a fancy to each other the first time we met. You recollect how pleasant we were Oh, that yes, I remember. Well? In that house with a green gate, Mr. Weller, they keep a good many servants. So I should think by the look of it. And one of them is a cook who has saved up a little money and is desirous to open a little shop in the chandlery way. So? As it happens, Mr. Weller, I met her at a chapel I go to. And the consequence was an acquaintance sprang up between us. And I may venture to say, Mr. Weller, that I am to be the chandler. And a very amiable chandler you'll make. The great advantage of this, Mr. Weller, will be that I shall be able to leave my present disgraceful service and devote myself to a better and more virtuous life. More like the way I, more like the way I was brought up, Mr. Weller. What's the matter with the man? <laughs> Chelsea Waterworks is nothing to him. What are you melting now with? The consciousness of willany? I cannot keep my feelings down, Mr. Weller. To think that my master should have suspected the conversation I had with yours that day at Berry. And so dragged me away in a post-chaise. What about the school, ma'am, and the sweet young lady? Uh, um, uh, um, he persuaded them both to say they knew nothing of him. Then... He deserted the poor girl for a better speculation. <gasps> Mr. Weller, it makes me shudder. But uh, can I persuade you to have a little glass of something with me somewhere? Not now, you can't. I've got to see my master, but I want a bit more of a talk with you, Job Trotter. So, if you're not particularly engaged, I should like to see you at the Great White Horse tonight about eight o'clock. Oh, I shall be sure to come. You had better. Or else I shall perhaps be asking after you at the other side of the green gate. And then I might cut you out, you know. Oh, I shall be sure to be with you, sir. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Until tonight, Mr. Weller. Take care, Job Trotter. Take care. Or I shall be one too many for you this time. Ah! Good morning, Mr. Pickwick. Mr. Magnus, good morning. And what do you <laughs> think of this, sir? <laughs> My appearance, sir? Your appearance. Oh, oh, 
Very striking indeed. Yes, yes. Most striking. I have sent up my card to the lady, Mr. Pickwick. And the waiter brought back word that she would see me at eleven. Oh. It wants only a few minutes now. Very near the time, eh? Oh, yes, it is near. <laughs> Rather too near to be pleasant, eh, sir? Confidence, my dear Mr. Magnus, is the great thing in these cases. I, I beg of you, Mr. Pickwick, but have you ever done this sort of thing in your time? You mean proposing? No, 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 never, never. And nonetheless, I should feel much obliged to you for any advice, sir. Well, sir, I think I should commence with a tribute to the lady's beauty and excellent qualities. Good, good. And from then I should divert to my own unworthiness. Very good, very good indeed. I should then expatiate on the warmth of my love and the depth of my devotion. Perhaps I might then be tempted to seize her hand. Seize her hand. (laughs) Well, I should then, sir, come to the plain and simple question... Will you have me? I think I am justified in assuming that upon this she would turn away her head. Uh, you think that may be taken for granted? Uh, if she didn't do it in the right place, it would be embarrassing. Uh, I think she would. Upon this, sir, uh, supposing there was no refusal, I would steal a respectful kiss. Oh, for sure. Uh, I, I think I should kiss Mr. Magnus. And at this particular point, I am decidedly of the opinion that she would murmur into my ears a bashful acceptance. Mr. Pickwick, I am infinitely obliged oh. to you. Oh, great heavens. It's eleven o'clock. She'll be waiting me. Uh, am I disarranged at all? You are perfectly neat. I wish you good fortune, sir. I, I shall be back directly to tell you. She's back next door. Oh. <laughs> now to follow up Sam's discoveries. Pickwick! Tupman! Snodgrass! Winkle, my dear friend! You, you've wasted no time. Is he really here? A jingle, I mean. Sam assures me he is. He met with his servant. We've reason to believe he is pursuing one of his infamous campaigns. Oh, as Captain Fitzmarshall? As Captain Fitzmarshall. At a certain large house in this neighborhood. Oh, the villain! He must be exposed at once. At this time, however, we shall not take the affair into our own hands, but have recourse to the full force of the law. Moreover... Ah, Mr. Pickwick, sir. Well, excuse me, gentlemen. No, no, no. Ah, Mr. Magnus, uh, uh, permit me to introduce you to my friends, Dartman, uh, Winkle, Snodgrass, uh, uh, Mr. Peter Magnus, whose acquaintance I made yes. on the journey here. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, gentlemen, your servant. Uh, Mr. Pickwick, allow me to speak to you one moment. You, you have spoken to her. Oh, I have spoken, Mr. Pickwick, uh, and you may congratulate me. I followed your advice to the very letter, and it couldn't possibly have been better. Mr. Pickwick, she is mine. Oh, I congratulate you with all my heart. You must see her, Mr. Pickwick, just for one moment. Well, please I... me. Uh, excuse us for one moment, gentlemen. Oh, uh, this way, if you please. Uh, 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 excuse me. After uh, four uh, rejections, though, you would imagine. Uh, well, well, on myself. Come in. Miss Witherfield, allow me to introduce my very particular friend, Mr. Pickwick. Mr. Pickwick, I beg to make you known to Miss Witherfield. Oh, oh. heavens, that man. What? Goodness gracious, that woman. What? What do you say, Mr. Pickwick? Where? What is the meaning of this? Why does Miss Witherfield hide her face rather than look at you? Well, you see, what is the meaning of it, sir? Do you know each other? Sir, I decline answering that question. Miss Witherfield, do you know this person? Answer me, madam. Oh, I, I have seen him. Where? Yes. Where? That I would not reveal for worlds. Upon my word, madam, considering the situation in which I am placed with regard to yourself, (laughs) you carry this off with tolerable coolness, madam. Oh, cruel, Mr. Magnus. Address your observations to me, sir. I alone am to blame, if anyone be. Oh, you alone are to blame, are you, sir? I see through you, sir. You repent of your determination now, do you? My determination? I recollect your words of last night, sir. You came down here to expose the treachery and falsehood of an individual on whose truth and honour you had placed implicit reliance. Sir, eh? But you shall answer it, sir. Answer what? Never mind, sir. Never mind. But I do mind, sir. And if you continue to address me in such a way, I shall insist upon a witness being present. Oh, oh no, no. Never fear, madam. No one shall hear a word uh, to your discredit. Oh.